When discussing pulleys, it's important that we understand the basic anatomy of pulleys as well as the design features and the load design capacities. So as we look at this assortment of pulleys here, we've got a general array and it's important to first note um, the edges of the pulley side plates. If you have a 90 degree or close to 90 degree edge on your pulley, that pulley is designed to mind prusiks. So if you're using your pulley as a change of direction application where you've got progress capture devices attached to the tension rope, the edge of that side plate will prevent the prusik from being wound up inside of the pulley and becoming an entanglement. If you have rounded side plates, typically those are designed as mechanical advantage components or changes of direction where progress capture devices are not necessary. We have pulleys with uh, side plates that can be unlocked and opened up and rigged while staying connected to progress capture components or to anchor points. Other pulleys without that opening side plate uh, application require you to ungate your carabiners, remove the pulleys from the system, and then appropriately rig them and reconnect them. With all the pulley applications, all the side plates need to fully articulate down to open up the top edge of the pulley and then have the rope placed in place and then closed back up. Ensure that before you put your pulleys in place, you've analyzed their load design capacity and are utilizing an appropriately uh, designed piece of hardware in that application. Remember to do your force in and force out calculations and make sure that you're operating and rigging safely. There are also specialized pulley devices such as Kootenay carriages or not passing pulleys. These pulleys have special applications that allow you to either pass large segments of material through the pulley such as a knot or they can work in reverse fashion gliding along the, across the top of lines in a high line application. Most of these types of pulleys have locking mechanisms that will either disengage a locking component on the pulley so that it can freely spin or lock it in place so that it does not spin. Ensure that you're making an appropriate decision about how that pulley is going to function so that you're not generating undue friction uh, on the rope system when not necessary. Another element in our hardware are connecting components, uh, carabiners and screw links. There's uh, some good data collected about safe applications for these devices, where they correlate and, and how they can be loaded. One of the big changes we've seen in recent years is the application of screw links for personal rescuer attachments. So when attaching a brake bar rack to a harness, screw links have a much higher safety margin because the gates or the links themselves are much less likely to become ungated through contact or gravity. Additionally, these devices are designed to be loaded in any fashion and maintain their same design load rating. With carabiners, if we load them inappropriately, for example, side loading them or loading the gate mechanism, we dramatically reduce the strength and safety of those connectors or carabiners. So links are a little more forgiving and safe in applications in personal rigging. Carabiners typically come in two varieties. We have L-rated carabiners and G-rated carabiners. <coughs> The recent uh, production or increased production of carabiners utilizing steel alloys have enabled us to get lighter and lighter with our hardware. Uh, so it can be a little bit deceiving sometimes when utilizing a very lightweight piece of hardware as to whether it is a G-rated piece of gear or an L-rated piece of gear. It's imperative when selecting our connectors and any hardware that we analyze the design loads of that hardware and rig it in appropriately. Try to have an accurate assessment of what your load is and then use appropriate decision making about where to rig those components in. It's also important to talk about the gate mechanisms on carabiners. <clears throat> um, we always want to ensure that we're using locking gates in rescue applications, which means that we have the ability to open the carabiner, close the carabiner, and then lock the mechanism. Uh, wire carabiners or spring gates or gates that are non-locking are typically designed for utility applications or water rescue based applications, not anything that we're going to use in our life safety com connection applications in rope rescue. It's also important that we denote the different types of locking mechanisms. So some locking mechanisms simply have quarter or half turns and then can be ungated. 
Other locking mechanisms have detent pins uh, with the same pin out or the same turn applications, but require a depression of that button in order to unlock the carabiner. Additionally speaking, once that is engaged, that carabiner cannot be ungated without depressing the detent pin. And then we have standard locking carabiners. We also have articulating gates. Articulating gates are advantageous because they open up uh, the width with which that gate can open, giving us a larger opening at the entry point into the carabiner. It's important when utilizing connectors such as carabiners that we ensure that we don't um, load them in inappropriate fashions that are, that are going to apply any torsional forces to the carabiners. So anytime we're linking a carabiner to another piece of hardware, we can refer to that as hard linking. When we're hard linking, if we don't have a swivel in place or haven't rigged this system very straight, clean, and neat so that the loads applied are going to keep the carabiner loaded um, from, uh, from top to bottom, not loading across spine and gate, then we want to make sure that we fix that so that we do stay in line. No torsional loading, no side loading.